Hi, I'm Darren Ferrucci and welcome. Here's another exercise or practice approach that comes from my book Groove Perspectives that I want to share with you today. And basically what it is, is just an approach to practice if you're finding that the groove that you're trying to play is just not quite working out. So let me uh, explain this. What you heard me play at the start of this video was a layered groove. So basically there are multiples of sounds occurring at one time. So it could be, you know, hi-hat and snare drum in unison, snare drum and bass drum in unison, or all three in unison. So with that, when you've got three parts making up a groove, then the quality of that groove is, you know, dependent upon each of those parts, you know, the snare drum part, the hi-hat part, the bass drum part, on being accurate. So it's very easy to overlook those individual parts when you're trying to play all of this at once. So it's a simple approach and you can do this with any kind of beat. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a layered groove or a linear groove or anything advanced. It could be something as simple as a rock beat. I know um, when I'm teaching some younger people, when they're playing a rock beat, for example, that has uh, four on the floor, what we call a four on the floor feel, you know, where the bass drum is playing quarter notes, this type of thing. A lot of students struggle with that. They find it easier to just play the kick on one and three. So again, it's one of those situations where we're playing four notes on the bass drum or quarter notes on the bass drum. And so therefore they have a little bit of trouble coordinating that snare drum and bass drum unison on beats two and four. So sometimes it's good to just pull even something that simple apart and try to fix fix the problems within that groove. Anyway, so let's get back to this groove that I was playing at the start of this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate each part. I'm gonna start with the hi-hat and then I'll practice the bass drum part on its own and I'll also practice the uh, snare drum part on its own as well. So what I'm going for here is just accuracy. So here's the hi-hat part on its own. One, two, three, four. Now, I urge you to practice this with a metronome so that you're really working on your accuracy and making sure that the notes are falling where they should fall. And also by doing that, you should also be focusing on staying as relaxed as you can with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the metronome here at 80 beats per minute. I'm going to set the metronome so it's playing the second and fourth 16th notes of each beat. So you don't have to do it this way. If you wanna just play quarter notes, by all means, but I'm just challenging myself by finding different ways to uh, practice with the metronome. And I've been doing this a little bit recently and I'm really enjoying the effect that it has. So here we go. So what you're gonna hear is the second and fourth 16th note of each beat. One, two, three, four. So that isn't particularly easy to do, but if you do it long enough, uh, you will just lock into it and it'll feel natural. But it's a really great way to not only develop your accu accuracy, but it's getting your ear to inform your hands where to play, where to place those notes. So that's the hi-hat part. I'm gonna move to the snare drum part next. So here's the snare drum part on its own without the metronome. One, two, three, four. Now this time I'll do that with the metronome playing the second and fourth 16th note of every beat. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
Okay, so that's the snare drum part taken care of. And then finally, I'm just gonna look at the bass drum part. Um, you know, the bass drum part is like really important in that we're trying to develop a really strong foundation. And I find that often when I pull these grooves apart and dissect them like this and then isolate the bass drum part, it's usually the bass drum part that sort of feels kind of less than confident, let's say. So really focus on that because when you think about it in the big picture, the bass drum part is what your bass player is gonna be kind of locking into in a lot of situations at least. And it's really the foundation, it's the bottom, it's, it's, it's the bottom of the groove, it's the bottom of the song, you know. So uh, really pay attention to the bass drum part. So here's the bass drum part on its own without the metronome. One, two, three, four. And here's the bass drum part with the metronome playing the second and fourth sixteenth note of each beat. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the bass drum part in isolation with the metronome. So then if you want, you can practice putting two voices together or you can just jump straight into um, playing all three voices together, basically the complete groove. A few things to notice and a few things to take care of while you're practicing this. Aside from the accuracy, just understand, and again, this is one thing I go on about a lot, is that it is common for a right-handed, right-footed drummer to sort of flam a little bit between the bass drum and the snare drum or the right foot and the left hand. That is a weak relationship, so be aware of that. You've got um, a unison, you know, on beat one, this thing, two, three, four. So, you know, that. Very easy to flam that. If I'm not thinking about it and concentrating on it, I will flam. Here's the whole bar, bass drum and snare drum. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna put the whole groove together and I'm going to play the groove on its own first. Now, this is the other advantage of practicing this way. It really does put you in touch with the exact rhythm that each individual limb is playing. So if you wanna try this, you can put the whole groove together and maybe sing the hi-hat part as you're playing the hi-hat part, or you might wanna sing the snare drum part or the bass drum part. So that approach really does put you in direct contact with what each limb is playing. So anyway, I'm gonna put this whole thing together without the metronome, and then I'll do it again with the metronome. One, two, three, four. And here it is with the metronome playing the second and fourth sixteenth of each beat. One, two, three, four. So there you go, there's uh, an approach for practicing grooves. If you're trying to work out where the inaccuracies are, why it doesn't feel good when you play it, just dissecting it like this, pulling it apart, isolating each part. 
It's a great way to practice and you can apply this to any groove. It doesn't really matter if it's a funk groove or a rock groove or a Latin groove or anything. It's just a really great way to build strength in each individual limb. Anyway, if you're keen to check out my books, I'm gonna leave a link in the description underneath this video. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, uh, hit the thumbs up button situation there. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a video, which is every week. And before before I go, I just wanted to thank you all. I hit 8,000 subscribers this morning when I woke up. So um, not because I woke up, but uh, it's, it's really nice. And I just want to thank you for all your support and all your encouragement. It's it's a, it, it means a lot to me. So I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, have a great week, folks, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.